Welcome to the beginning of our journey together as I go in search of the strongest freshwater fighting fish in the world, the Papuan black bass. This is Mount Hagen, Roden Ridge Lodge, and today we're leaving here for a 250 kilometre flight to the fantastic scenic Lake Murray. Come on the journey, it's going to be a cracker. But for me, it started two years ago. The planning, the preparation, a flight from Melbourne to Brisbane, Brisbane to Moresby, one hour northwest to this beautiful Mount Hagen. This is amazing. The anticipation, it's almost killing me. Mount Hagen is a very unique place and believe it or not it wasn't discovered until the mid 1930s. What brought the white man to this area was the lure of gold. So just think about this, in 85 years this place has gone from never seeing a white man to being up to current modern day times, iPads and all that sort of stuff. That's pretty mind blowing. Also very, very popular with twitches, people who follow birds all around the planet. I've got some on the bus today. We've actually heard the call of a superb bird. Now I believe this bird is the bird of paradise on all the New Guinea logos. Absolutely incredible, never seen one. Edinburgh come here many, many years ago to see them dance. These guys have actually seen them. They've heard one here, but very luckily we might see one. If not, we'll just show you a picture. When you come to Papua New Guinea, everything is an adventure. Even that bus ride down the hill this morning, one hour, OMG, some of the stuff we saw. We had some twitches with us. People love looking at birds from America. We stopped and saw some pretty fascinating feathery friends. The people walking to school, the beautiful children, farmers in their gardens, those clouds rolling over the mountains, just not something you see every day. Now behind me is a Pac 750 XL. It's an aircraft designed for very short takeoffs and very short landings. Perfect for our strip at Lake Murray, which is one hour and 18 minutes away. They're packing the plane. It is so close now, I literally cannot wait. Now boys, I don't want you to panic at all. I did get my pilot's license off the internet, but I passed with flying colours. That's the button I'm looking for. Nose up, nose down. What could possibly go wrong? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Lake Murray, where the current temperature is 27 degrees and the black bass are big. Well, I've read a lot about Lake Murray, I've seen the photos, but nothing could prepare me for how good this place looks from the air. The water looks just fantastic. And what I love about coming to these parts of the world, the welcoming party. These guys, they're just fantastic. I'm going to say hello. Hello. Good to see you, man. High five. Hey. 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 <laughs> what are you guys? Anyone? They left me hanging. <laughs> Well, 
Well, this area is currently in the middle of an extreme drought. It hasn't rained properly here for over two and a half months, and the boys have been telling me they have not seen the lake water levels this low for over a decade. It might make the fishing tough, but also it makes getting to lodge tough, because the lodge was on the edge of the water, now it ain't. But you know what? It's all part of the adventure. After you. That's a pretty cool looking pier if I do say so. I bet there was plenty of people willing that to go pear shaped. After three serious days of travel, lots of aeroplanes, buses, automobiles, it's all been happening. We're finally very, very close to the lodge. The closer we get, the more incredible this environment becomes. We're finally enjoying the comforts of Lake Murray Lodge. I'm with Gary Barbie from Angling Adventures. Gary, when was the first time you actually set eyes on Lake Murray? Ooh, 10 years ago, Paul. Uh, flying up to the mountains up here, Mendy, trout fishing. And the pilot says, oh, there's Barramundi down in that big lake, and I'm gonna get there one day. So two and a half years ago, arrived here with the owner of the lodge, camped up just up the hill there, and had a, a bit of experimental fish, a couple of days. I've sent a few people over since to look at it, and we opened last November. I come to New Guinea in 1998 chasing black bass. We did 10 days with 10 men and in that period we landed 20 black bass. The closest I got was a fish about 20 pound and my mate hit it over the head three times and <laughs> some away. So technically, I haven't caught a black bass yet. Technically, I know it's tough. What do you think our chances are? Because to me, they're a bit like a unicorn. Do they actually exist? They do exist and when they do hit you, you really find out what a black bass is like. And the, the bass to live up here, this far up, 250 k's from the sea, they shouldn't be here, but they are. There's nothing as raw as this place. I love PNG, I love the culture, and I love the fact that you pull up, you see this lodge on the hill, it is five star. And let me just say, I've stayed in a lot of dives over the years. This joint is absolutely amazing. Gary Barbie, Angling Adventures, he has got me absolutely frothing because tomorrow, after nearly 20 years, I might finally catch a Papuan black bass. Gaz, the batteries in my mic have gone, mate, so I'm going to talk very loud. And okay, quote. yell on my ear, I don't care. Old gal. Oh, look at that swirl. That tail print. That's big display. Oh, oh no. no! I'm not cut netting that. No. It's a monster catfish. <laughs> no! What did I do to you? <laughs> um, oh, look at the size of it. Well, it got the heart going anyway. I think we might actually net it so the boys can get the hooks out. I'm not going to uh, try and get them out. It's a cruel, cruel world. <laughs> okay. Big catfish, you. You like catfish? Yeah? He likes it. Okay. You hang on steady there and I'll put him down. It's 24 pound of catfish. Feed your family, huh? Or maybe the dogs. <laughs> Thank you. 
We made the journey up the Boy River this morning. Took us about an hour and a half from the lodge through some beautiful snag country runoffs. We didn't find any black bass. The boys are saying it's just too dirty, but that's what you need to do when you come to these places. You need to explore. You just never know. We might have found them all up there. So back to the lake, try and find some fish there. But if not, there's always tomorrow and a few rivers south. He's your pet now? Yeah. He's beautiful. Yeah. And he's friendly? Yeah. Can I pat him? Can I pat him? Yeah. Just like this? He can eat. Well, that's beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. That's a very famous bird, even in yes. Australia. What's his name? No, 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 no. Roger. <laughs> yeah. Roger. Roger, we call him yeah. Roger. Yeah. If I come back one day, I will see how, how big Roger gets. <laughs> beautiful bird, you're very, very lucky. Thank you very much for having us. It was our pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. He's so cool. I want to see one of those birds my whole life. Well, in New Guinea, it's all about the experience and what an experience that was. We just pulled up at a river mouth and the whole village has come down to see us and a guy's holding something in the air. It's actually a bird of paradise. He told me that he tried to spear it a couple of weeks ago, just clipped its wing, went and grabbed it and now it's his pet. Unbelievable. He's still holding it up there on the hill, holding it in the air. I think he's the village legend because he's got a live bird of paradise. And I must be happy because it's actually eating out of his hand. I've always wanted to see one of these birds. Now I've actually seen one in the flesh. It just blew my mind. So pretty. It's a solid fish. It come right over the timber, Gaz. And I actually thought I was snagged for a sec. Jeez, that shows the pull on him. Oh, just incredible. I actually thought I was snagged and it was bouncing right through those logs. And straight away, Gaz, first troll at the storm. There is a snag and this fish was right in the timber. Can you pass me the net, please? Lots of head shakes. I'm glad it shook its head then because it just like there's a one yeah. hole like a, a snag. I, I actually thought I was snagged. It's a lot of weight here, Gaz. I'll just back that drag off a touch because we're out in the middle of the river now. But this is serious gear, like 80, oh, oh. 85 pound fins. And this thing is just hanging down low, kicking the head. They're he's insane, got, aren't they? He's got it out in the middle of the river, so we're pretty sure there's no snags here. We hope. Oh, oh. Oh. How does that do that? It's... How do they do it? I wrapped this braid around my hand this morning, Gary, and I struggled to pull an inch of line off the reel, and this thing just took about five metres. Now, they tend to pop up because the water is a little murky. Here we, Here we go. Close. He's still going to have a bit of going. Oh, oh my look God. at the size of that! Hang on. Oh, oh yeah! <laughs> oh. <laughs> look at your face! <laughs> Oh my god! This is what I call a massive bathroom black oh. bass. Yes! We did it! <laughs> oh, we haven't got him in yet! We did it! Now, what are we gonna do? I'm gonna get him Hang in. Hang on, now let's hold him in the water for a sec. Let's wipe the water off the lens. Let's get prepared. This is why you come to PG! <laughs> <Gary. laughs> oh. Okay, Gaz. Oh, I'm gonna try and get him in. Are you right? Oh jeez! Oh, that is that is a solid fish. Let's put it down on the ground on first. Look at the size oh. of that. And look at that lure in there. It's almost gone, guys. You just see the bib. We're going to get it out of the net. We're going to measure it. I cannot tell you how excited I am. Gaz, two years of preparation for this moment. And you're just trolling along. You're not expecting. You get all these other good shots. We're talking about something else. Oh, I'm snagged. No, we're not. It's moving. Unbelievable. I'll grab, grab the fish with the boga. Obviously going to look after this fish, but they are very, very tough. Get that in there. Look at that lure, it's gone. <laughs> Slide him out. All right. Hang on, get that out. Oh, come on, mate. Come on, come on. Oh, look at that. What an incredible fish. Oh, cannot tell you how happy I am, Gary. 
Well, the weight is insane. Equally enjoyed, Paul. The weight is insane. Look at those canine teeth. Okay, sliding him around, guys. Well, it's going to be hard to measure him because he's uh, the Lewis going to stop us. <laughs> no, we're right. Okay, we're in there. Look at that fish there. He's on there. Yep. 82 centimetres. 82, that's a good fish. That's a solid fish. Well, just insane. What I might try and do is get the hooks out of this fish, but I just need to show you the size of this thing. If I can hold him, look at that. That is a mighty, hey. mighty <laughs> fish. I just can't hold him. There we go. There's still many fish are too big to hold. There we are. Papillon black bass, Mary Lou Janet family, one of the toughest fish on the planet. We'll get the hooks out, we'll let him go, and then Gazza. Before you do that, do you want a kiss? I think we might have another little cuddle. <laughs> We're very happy boys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, support the belly as much as possible. Oh, oh look at that gee. power. That's true Lou Janet style, isn't it? I mean, for people on the Gold Coast, people in Australia in the northern parts, how much like a mangrove jack is that thing? It is just a mangrove jack on steroids, massive canine teeth on the front. They grab the prey and the bottom ones just tear it to bits. How keen is he to go, Gaz? No, he's a bulldozer. <laughs> He'll go down and knock some more trees over so he can have a home. <laughs> okay, Gaz, I think he's ready. Yep. Look oh, at that. Problem. Oh! He's swimming against the current. Straight down. Well, I've had many wonderful angling moments, but that was one of them. Well, it's got to be. I mean, People around the world know about them. Not many catch them. Not many get here to catch them. You have. Finally, 1998, I think it was my first black bass trip. And all these years later, I finally put the runs on the board. And what a way to start. That's a big fish. Did you like it? No. As I say to Jet. So you don't want to catch it? As I say one. to Jet, <laughs> I didn't like it. I loved it. <laughs> I can't remember the last time I put so much effort into choosing my gear of choice. These black bass, just incredible fish. The rod, an Ian Miller custom Papuan bass. Beautiful stick. Now, Ian Miller is responsible for 10 to 15 ranges of Shimano fishing rods. You'll see his name etched on them. He's a very good fisherman and a very good rod maker. The real Shimano Calcutta 400D. I needed something strong enough. And the braid, it's 85 pound fins. It's called 40G. It's a brand new braid and they're stable. They express two spools out from the States. And I'm pretty happy they did because it is super fine and super strong. I can actually feel my lure bouncing through the timber. If you look at that rod tip, see it every now and then it just goes whack whack. That's the big bib actually getting stuck on some wood. And then because of the big bib, it'll bounce over the wood and then it keeps moving. And you can't get a better scenario than your lure actually crashing through timber because that's where these fish live. That's a fish. Oh, yep, still there. Well done, guys. It's hard to try and hook a black bass and eat your music bar in a case. Oh, God, no, mate. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> you got him out all right? I think so. It's not very big, I don't think. You just never know. Oh, oh he just got bigger. He just got bigger. Not real big, it's just good head shakes. <laughs> Oh, that hurts swallowing that muesli bar. <laughs> it's only small. Oh yeah, no, good head shakes. He's just assessing the situation, mate. I want a small one, Paul. Why well, is that, because the big ones hurt too much? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Smitty and Jamal are doing a great job today. Oh, head shake, head oh, shake. Yes. Oh, come on. Just neutral? They don't drive away from me. That'll make it a bit easier for you, mate. Very clever the way the boys get out in the middle of the river here. There's less snags in the in the middle. Oh yeah, beautiful fish. That's a size, that doesn't hurt so much. That's a beautiful fish, but you say that, just bring this fish in. It's little by black bass standards, but how is the fight of that fish on that gear? Like, how many pounds is that braid? Uh, 50 as well. 50 pound braid, that fish would be what, 10 pounds? 11 and a half. 11 and a half pounds? 
and a foot goes through his paces once again. Oh, look at that. That's, now, that is not pleasant. If you've just eaten dinner, I apologise. Again, we're going to wipe the lens because these things have a very big tail. And we'll be back to show you Gaz's fish. Well, Gaz, another beautiful member of the Lieutenant Goldie Eye family. And the eyes are matching the name. Beautiful. Absolutely. Goldie Eye and a Lieutenant. Just put him on the mat here now, Gaz. Why is it so important the guys measure all these fish and write little notes in their book? It's a brand new fishery. Yep. It hasn't even been going a year. We're trying to get as many stats as we can. Length, weights, where we're catching them, how big they're growing. We're not putting tags in, we don't need to. We just get a good feel after a year or so and yeah, can't hurt. All those stats are helping. It's all catch and release. This is going to help it a little bit more. Beautiful, mate. Well, I'll pick him up, all 59 centimetres of him. And when you look at a fish in the anatomy, isn't that just one of the most beautiful things you've ever seen? They're just so solid. I mean, well proportioned. They're like a bodybuilder as a fish. Absolutely. How's the canine teeth? Look at those teeth. Those top fangs, quite often you find them in your lure. And those bottom fangs for grasping. I would not like to be a bait fish in these oh, waters. Oh, no. Oh, no. Chopped in half. Oh, I'm just going to drop this fish back in, let it go. And this is the way we do it. Literally just bang. And that quick splash gives a burst of oxygen. Come on, Mr. Barbie. Oh, that was a hit. I'm on, but I think it's very small. Oh, yeah. it just grew. Oh, it's got a hit. Yep, double. <laughs> double. <laughs> I can't see your oh, 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 under. Uh, under. Here you go, me. Go, yeah. me. That's it. Oh, mine just pulled off. Mine just pulled off while I was mucking around trying to get out. Oh, I think mine hit it so many times it was still on, but. How is that guy's double on black bass? I can't even speak. I'll wind mine in. They just hit it so many times. There must be a lot of fish packed in there, mate. Oh, a lot of fish packed in there. It was about an hour and a half ago we were going to have a lunch break last troll. Yeah, and we've already been up the river this morning, down the river, we've done everything. It's been a big morning. Uh, uh. He hit funny too, didn't he? Oh, I'd like it to come out and he got back on again. It feels like a log more than a fish, this one. Maybe it is. Oh, oh no, oh, it's a moving log. Just in neutral. <laughs> Mine felt the same. A lot of dead weight and then those massive lunges. Well, there's a bit of weight there, mate. Oh, he's... Where's the boat? Do you want a bow groom or net him? Bow groom. What do you prefer, net or oh. net? Or net? Oh, jeez, he doesn't like... Uh. This fish has got some weight, guys. <laughs> oh, he's not far away. Well, he is now. <laughs> there he is. Oh! Uh, we do that to the camera every time. What is it, these things? I need some windscreen wiper in the spotters. The spotters. <laughs> yep, lift him in, Smitty. Up here. Oh, up here. That's it. Thank you very much. Gee, he's solid, Gaz. He is. He's very a nice snapper. Very weighty snapper. Watch out for the rants. Okay, there we go. So, this is going to be fun. Be very, very careful with hooks in nets and bass. We're going to use the pliers. pliers for you. Because if this fish kicks like that, you end up with a treble in your hand, will not be a pleasant way to finish a day's fishing. It's that one. And Gaz, here is your fish. Oh, those big canine teeth on there. Mate, do I put your rod down and hold your fish? Oh, look at, look at the size of the thing. Look, like, give it a comfort yeah. lift. Grab that. Wow, it is getting it's big. Heavy, heavy. Just watch those spikes. Wow, I mean, well, I'll, I'll try and help you roll them up there. Go. That's better. Just leaning into the chest. Incredible fish. We keep saying it, but how's the size of the gills for pumping oxygen? And those two big canines, very, very specific to this species, which they grab the bait fish with and just hang on until it's in its death throes. Everything about them just shouts muscle, doesn't it? Strength. Just super strength. And that tail is obviously for very short, sharp lunges, not for speed over a long period of time, because it's just got such incredible power to go whack, whack, whack. They're actually made for two purposes, swimming fast and splashing the net man and the cameraman. Well, they've definitely done that. In fact, I need some more 50 plus sunscreen after that last <laughs> go. Gaz, well done. Double look up on bass, one fell off, but it doesn't matter. We're doing this it This day just gets better and better.
Well, this is the Storm Arashi. Well, I think that's how it's pronounced. Look at that. Those big canine teeth have chewed it to bits. The good thing is, though, it hung on. And I got told by Aidan Lewis at Rapala that this was the lure to use in these black bass. Lubin Fife has been using them in South Australia, catching giant Murray Cod. And he told me, guaranteed it's going to hang together. And it looks just like the small herring in this lake that the big bass are feeding on. Got to say, I'm fairly impressed how it's going. Trolling for these black bass in New Guinea is such an effective method. We've got deep divers on. There's lots of timber here. You can see it along the waterfront. And by doing the trolling method, what it does, it allows the lure to get to its favourite depth and it stays there the whole time. When you're casting, the lure goes through the air, takes a while to get down to the desired depth, then you pick it up again. So you're only in that zone for a very short period of time. It's all about keeping the lure right down there in the structure because that's where you find the bass. Oh, that, yeah, yeah, I'm on. That's a fish. Oh, I've got my thumb on the back. Oh, how's those two hits, Gaz? You saw that, didn't you? <laughs> I saw you nearly get pulled in. Oh, we got a camera boat in front of us. That's all right. Oh, that's uh, all right. Watch your head. Watch your head. <laughs> the drive from the camera boat. We got, uh, just put that, James. Just wind yours in very slow. We're in that strike zone, then, Paul. In that strike zone. Now, that was just amazing. I felt the thump as I went through the timber. The same little lure. Look at those head shakes. Just awesome. And as I was saying, trolling, it's so important to keep that lure right in the structure. Now, my friend James is actually towing a lure off the camera boat and it could be wrapped around my lines. Just take that line up slowly, James, not a stress, as long as you don't put too much pressure on it. I might get a second lure here. It's all good, James, don't panic. <laughs> you can't blame a man for having a line in the water in this sort of conditions. He wouldn't be a fisherman if you didn't. He wouldn't be a fisherman. Just keep taking the slack up there, James, for me. Oh, how's those head lunges, Gaz? Uh, it wakes you up. You know it's still on. Oh, yeah. There's the leader. What are you calling this one, Paul? I'm calling it a, a bass. <laughs> Is it a bass? Yeah. Oh, he's judging by that run. Just wind your slack in a bit, James, just in case. Oh, oh, oh she's a good one. It's a big bass. Hang on. Oh no, it could go pear shape. We've got the lure but not the fish. Yes! <laughs> oh, bring it in. James, now that orange line, that's James. And this line, that's mine. And that's a cracking bass today, Gaz. Can it get any better? Uh, it can, but who cares? It's <laughs> at the best now. <laughs> that, it was just like thump, whack, I was on. And that is a cracking fish. Wow, we. You know what? Sometimes things are a little pear shaped. We've got some tangles, but it doesn't matter because I'm happy to be LB tangles as long as there's a big <laughs> Papian bass in the net. Yes! Oh, oh he just grew, gas. It did. Sorry about the back of the net. Oh, that oh is it has huge. grown. It's getting bigger by the second. Wow. That is a monstrous fish. I know we keep going on, but seriously, these things are an angler's dream. It's what everyone wants to catch. They talk about black bass. They call them black, but look at that, look at that color on the side there and that power. That is what makes them such incredible fish. Sorry about the water in the lens once again. Uh, that little storm lure, now that is the only one of its kind in the world, Gaz. Well, the truth is, I know you've got another one in the box. Different colour though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I ain't stopping for nothing. The boys at Rapala got me that lure especially. We're going to get all this braid, line and net out of this fish. And then we'll show you just how big and fat it is. Well, that little cod lure is doing all right on bass, isn't it? Hey, there must be a lot of little cod live up here. <laughs> Obviously the old black bass didn't know that, that was a little Murray Cod lure. How good was that to take the strike, Gaz? I can understand now having caught a few why people just get so obsessed with these fish. And this fish is 78 centimetres. What would you think, about 25 pound? Yeah. Somewhere in there, it's hard yeah. to tell in it. We don't really want to weigh him because to weigh him you've got to hang him, we don't want to do that to the fish. I'm supporting his belly, they're very hard to hang on to because they're just so thick. We'll put him back, mate, but Lake Murray, what are people around the world going to do when they see this because they're going to be blown away? Well. It's a reasonable price trip, but they're going to spend a lot more on tackle because they're going to lose a lot, I assure you. that You will lose lures, your break line, and rods. But that's why we come, because we want that challenge. It's all about getting smashed up. And when you've got fish like this that live in this structure, getting smashed is just part of the deal. Well, hooks are out. We've swum this fish several times to make sure it's going to go back safe. And for now, it is hasta la vista. And that's the best way to do it. I cannot tell you just how blessed I feel at this moment. 
to come to PNG to meet some of the most incredible people I've ever met in my life and then to catch black bass, a fish I've dreamt about for years. Seriously, pinch me. No, it's not a dream. Yes, we got a big bite. I didn't fix the sander. <laughs> oh, how funny was that? That must have been playing with that for ages. Well, we can't get our sounder working at the moment, can we, Gaz? No. But we've got, oh, how's the head shakes on this thing? Can you pass me the net, please? But we have got the fish working for us. I don't think it really matters if we can see where the fish are on the side. No, no, we, we know anyway. this area pretty well here, don't we? We've been uh, up and down it a few times today. Oh, he's under the boat, this guy. I'm going to let you get him out there in your control. <laughs> oh, that displacement of water, just suggesting keeps... it's a good fish. Oh, oh yes. with a black tail on it. Oh, yes. He just keeps taking 80 pound line off this talica. Well, there's no tomorrow. Those big head shakes, they're aggressive, aren't they? It's just pulled your whole body, you can't stop it. You can't do a thing about it. And I've got ridiculous amounts of drag on here. Oh, look oh at that! My God. Look at that water displacement from that, oh, from oh that my. tail. Oh. oh! Bring it closer, Paul, can you? Yeah. <laughs> Oof, Gaz. Oh. I think we need a bigger net. <laughs> Got him on. This is just getting better by the second. This is going to be the longest hour of eye fish in history because there's just too many black bass. Look at this one. <laughs> well, there's the storm Arashi. It was all the way down its gob, but I managed to get it out, Gary. And that is one of the fattest, biggest black bass I have ever seen. What do you reckon? Yep, a bit wider than you. That is just, and that's a big effort, especially the way I've been eating at that lodge. Gary, when you discussed coming here, I could never have imagined it was this good. I was thinking maybe one or two fish a day. Can this place always produce fish like this? It has so far. So even though you come over, you're not sure, I hope it works, hope it works. It has for every group. So why wouldn't it work for us? Well, it's worked for us. It has just blown my mind. PNG, thank you so much to PNG Tourism that have made this possible. Of course, my good friend, Gary Barmby and the Adventures and Lieutenant Goldieye, the magnificent black bass of Papua New Guinea.